Hello everyone, I am a Man of Interests, and it's time for The Cool Board. If this is your first time joining, The Cool Board is a very simple premise. Every week, I'm going to take 12 items in the Mechanical Keyboard community, and together with chat, I'm going to rank them. Wow, cool, meh, or yikes. Where will different keyboards, key sets, and switches fall on the cool board? Let's find out, chat. Let's go. I have 12 items for everyone today. So this should be pretty, pretty fun. Thank you so much for the follow, by the way. I saw that. So, will we get a wow today? Who knows? Last episode, we did get the Zephyr and Jur A06 as well as for sure, so that's really awesome. That was pretty awesome. So let's see what else we get this week. Um, also, if you stay after the stream, I have unboxings of some stuff, so we'll see. Thank you, Mr. Petrov. Okay, so the first item designed by Zambumon, a set that recently shipped out with extras being sold and doing quite well. I'm personally a fan of this set. At first I wasn't in round one, but round but by the time round two happened, I definitely warmed up. And round two was a different profile. Round one was SA, round two, GMK. Of course I'm talking about GMK Chocolatier. Mm, a lot of people did like that gold novelty for that gold accent for the enter. Um, yeah, what do you guys think of GMK Chocolatier? I have this set on my E7. Um, I quite quite love it. Let me just let me just flex it real quick for for all y'all chilling out in chat. What do you guys think of GMK Chocolatier? Oh, look at this luscious luscious brown. It is a luscious brown. This, wow, cool, meh, cool to better. Not a fan. Hard flex. You know it. Um, what does chat think? What does chat think of this set? I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Um, I think it's, I think it's at least cool, you know? I think it's at least cool. The real question is, how cool? I don't think it's too cool for school, because if it was too cool for school, we wouldn't have the ever-so-beloved chocolate milk, as you all know. Um... But of course, you know, it's not the most coolest thing at school, having chocolate milk. Um, but it's still pretty cool. Still pretty cool. Um, I don't think it's a meh. Is it cooler than GMK Muted? I think that's a good, a good baseline to go off of to, ask, to start with you, chat. Chat, is this cooler than GMK Muted? We're using a lot of some yeses. Nebulant being the Nebulant just is just not a chocolate fan. Neither is Gandalf. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Muted is dank. Slightly cooler. It's not cool. Ah, you guys are pretty, pretty balanced now. Some people, some people believe that brown is too poopy to be cool, but some people like chocolate of various varieties so GMK Chocolatier where is this falling I think it's on the same tier as muted personally I'm going to rank it just below muted vertically vertically just below muted okay I think I'm going to start having replaced pins with these tacks so I can fit things so I'll move this silver pin out and replace it with a tack so I can have another tack. Low pro it. See, now, ooh, look at this. I can cover stuff up. Bam. Jim Gage Chocolate Tier. Same tier as muted, just slightly below. Eh. We're going to need a bigger board. Yeah, at some point, we're going to need a bigger board. So something else to think about. For future episodes, what I might be doing is um, cutting off the pictures after the episode. So you only will see the pictures for the newest episode or the current episode. Um, so let that fester in your brain 
as we continue through the rest of these items. Our next item is an ergonomic keyboard that company had a rocky start. The beginning of this keyboard, when it first released, it was accused of stealing from another existing keyboard. That was this keyboard, the, the day this keyboard exists, the first thing that happened was a different company said, you stole that from us. You stole that from us. That was the first thing that happened when that keyboard released. Uh, this keyboard features, only features, Cherry MX Browns and is unique. There is finger wells that are plate mounted, but thumb clusters that are PCB mounted. One of the most unique things about this board, it's one of the only modern produced boards that have Cherry MX switches where the diodes are built into the switch. You know, like the area where you can put your LED legs through, they have diodes there. So to desolder a switch, there's four contacts you need to desolder. Two for the switch and two for the diode. Um, of course, I am talking about the Kinesis Advantage. It has DSA, homing row, OEM, everywhere else. How cool is the Kinesis Advantage? And if you don't know, the company uh, and keyboard that uh, people claim it ripped off of is Maltron's full-size ergonomic keyboard. Um, so, what do you guys think of the Kinesis Advantage? Got some yikes in chats. Some yikes, yikes, meh. Too expensive. Though these go for around two hundred dollars. Um, it does have built-in Dvorak support, which that aspect is cool. The board itself, hmm. Amazon has them for three hundred. Eh. If you ever consider getting one, get one on get a used one on eBay for like one fifty max price. Um, yeah, but don't ever get one of these brand new. That's that's a big dumb, big dumb. Okay, I've used one eBay, fix it up, clean it up if you want to try a board like this. But what do you guys think? A lot of mez and yikes and chat. Is this a yikes board? Is this, is this keyboard too dated in our community to be any semblance of cool? It looks like pretty negative though. And I kind of agree with all this negativity surrounding the Kinesis Advantage. Especially since they have the new Freestyle 2, which is more of a traditional layout that splits. Um, they have that now. I think that definitely will take the place of something like the Kinesis Advantage. So, is it like here? Like a definite yikes? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Or is it meh? Or is it slightly over under meh? So under flamingo? More left. I don't think it, I don't know if it's this left. As it could be. I think. Reject the tyranny of Cordy Rose Stagger. Further left. I'm gonna put it right here for now. I think it's okay right here. So yikes, as decided by the chat and community. Okay, moving on next. Definitely an interesting one. I feel bad because I, I was supposed to write down the designers for when I forget them, but I didn't. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna look this one up right now. Um, um, because yeah so next this next keyboard was designed by koala pear i am a big dum dum sometimes this next keyboard was designed by koala pear it is a board that released quite some time ago back when it released everyone was like whoa a left-handed number pad whoa alps whoa specifically Four people with AEK2 keycaps. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Monarch. Designed by Koala Pair, 
for 250 before shipping. This ran, I think, two years, two-ish years ago. Um, has a left-hand numpad. It's for people who got Al uh, Apple AEK2s um, and like, well, what do I, I, I want to do something with this. It's a low-pro design. Um, it's just like plate, plate, a middle thing, right? So how people used to design boards a long time ago to save money and because, you know, people weren't, eh, right? I don't think it's aged very well. I think it was cool, but I don't think age has been very kind to this sandwich. That's the only downside. Um, I do like the fact that, hey, if you've got AEK2, which has nice keycaps, awesome. Everything's going to fit as you want you're going to use a lot of your keycaps um it's great it's great for that the numpad definitely is awesome having that left hand numpad because they could have easily just made this but you know had numpad normally it's cool that he decided to you know put on the left because back then that wasn't really a thing it still kind of isn't a thing um is it cooler than the canoe? No, it's not cooler than the canoe. Um, I'm just inside that right now. It's not cooler than the canoe. Um, is it cooler than the Ergodox Easy? Uh, uh, I think it's aged worse than the ZZ96. Pretty, pretty easy to say it's aged worse than the ZZ96, I think. Um, hmm. It's better than the Acepad Tech Hall Effect keyboard, that's for sure. That's that's a for sure kind of thing. So I'm put it over here. I think it's over here. I don't think it's gone too well this Monarch keyboard, but it's not horrible. Come on, there we go. There we go. That's where it's going to be going. Okay, this next one was designed by a very, very good friend of mine. Um, this is the first set that was officially licensed by the IP holder or got permission to be licensed by the IP holder. Um, this set ran in DSA. Um, there's been two rounds of it. The first round was on Mass Drop. The second round was on the IP holders website, uh, one of their websites. Um, when this came out, people were really enamored by the colors used because PBT, um, looked really, really good on it. It has, you know, unique text compared to unique legends in terms of the text font compared to any other DSA sets. Um, it's a sci-fi set. If you know what it is, you'll love it. If you don't care for the IP, you still might love it because of how colorful it is. It's DSA Galaxy Class designed by Ryan Norbauer. So, this is probably, in my opinion, one of, if not the best DSA set. And that's because I love Star Trek, personally. Um... Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pretty pretty big fan. Um, there was two rounds. The first round had um, a a dark space bar. I believe future rounds they revised that to have alpha colored space bars. Um, that was pretty cool. First round compatibility was pretty eh. The second round compatibility definitely expanded it way more um, to much a bigger uh, extent. Um, compared to how it originally was. I'm a big fan. It's going at least cool in my book. Definitely a, definitely a certain level of cool in my book. Um, it is very niche. I'll say that. It's, 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 it's niche, um, but it was cool for round two. You know, Roddenberry Shop was like, yeah, that's a great idea, Ryan. We want this to happen. Um, the fact that they got that IP though is pretty pretty cool, right? Because these days most people, the as they talked about on this week in keyboards, the current theme is to go with you know a cultural theme as opposed to like something more specific, just because of worries of IP sometimes. Um, 
I'll put it right here. It's cool. Solid, solid cool. Very solid cool. I hope. So, unfortunately, the IP is transferred back to NBC. So, I think the only downside is we may never see a GMK version. But, oh gosh. I really want to see a GMK Alucard's set. You know what I'm saying? Um, for anyone who, likes, anyone who likes Star Trek, if this wasn't GMK, amazing. Absolutely amazing. <sighs> okay. So, this next one is a set that w that's been highly sought after despite having horrible, horrible compatibility in my opinion. It's still very sought after because this key set uses a material that isn't normally used for key sets. It uses this material in its entirety for the key set released quite a while ago and it hasn't been produced for a couple years at least and that's why it's so sought after it's colorful or you can get it in all white or you can get it in all pink or you can get the rainbow version of course i'm talking about jelly pom keycaps i have a set that i own i just hold on to it like i don't i actually don't have a keyboard that it's compatible with aside from my uh nova touch but jelly pom this used to be the bee's knees Originally in OEM, Fang did do a small run for Cherry Profile ones as well. How cool are Jelly POMs? They're really hard to get nowadays. They're pretty thin, to be honest, which is the big downside. Um, but they're still very sought after. They have a really nice, smooth, almost slippery, but a comforting kind of slippery feel to them. Um, yeah, you have is right. Um, you can't really get it because no one's selling them. I haven't used my set in like six months and I'm still not selling it. <laughs> Someday I will. Someday I will. Uh, what do you guys think about Jelly POM? It's definitely left the conscience of the community quite a bit just because you can't really get it and no one makes it. What dost thou thinketh? Of Jelly POM. Is it a relic of the past and no longer as cool as it once was? Or does that rareness and specialty to it kind of push it forward to be a little cool? Rainbow is cool. Put it next to Advantage. In the lower left corner. I don't think it's a yikes. I don't think it's a yikes. Um, I don't think it's that bad. It might be meh these days because it's pretty thin. It has horrible compatibility. Can't find it. And even if you can find it, it's extremely expensive. Um, that's, that's quite a few things kind of against it, right? So I think it's at least a, at least until it either goes down in price or you can be able to find it much easier. I think it's going to have to be a meh. Maybe someday if a manufacturer decides to pick Palm up again and can deal with the annoyingness of it, uh, of working with POM as keycaps and can bring it to the mainstream market, it's going to be kind of be there. So let's just put it right here. Pretty meh. Pretty meh. Okay. Our next item is a keyboard. This keyboard is a 40% that has definitely made waves in the community. Um, be mostly because when it came out, there was no compatibility aside from getting all DSA keycaps for it, or keycaps that the designer ran himself on his own site. Um, 
I've reviewed this quite a long time ago. I actually like the layout as a 40%, which is pretty rare. Um, of course, I'm talking about the minivan by Evan GS, or you might also know him as, know him as Evang, but it's Evan GS. Where does the minivan fall on the cool board? Meh, meh, mega meh. Do we man cool? Yikes, yikes, AF. Meh, cool. Good 40s layout. Not on the board. Isn't, it isn't part of the community. Too much baggage. There is baggage. Can we include the designer in the placement? If so, yokes. Strong, cool. Degaff at the board based off the maker. So the, the, the designer slash maker does bring controversy to a lot of people. And you know what? That could influence how cool a board is. Um, Mantelo, cool. Major Petrov, you think the keyboard is cool, but the marketing and all that that surrounds it kills it. Also fair to think. So are we, are we saying pretty meh then? Like, like meh. Seems pretty negative in chat. I think most mostly in chat it looks like you guys are like, the layout's cool. It's a pretty cool forty percent layout. But then when you bring about everything else around it, brings it down. Is I think the general consensus you guys are getting at. You guys and gals, sorry. Here, just like a solidly, I think that brings it to the, the yikes. Baggage and drama, no man is an island. Here, just like solidly likes and man on the bottom. Yeah. Maybe things will change in a lot of respects in the future, but I think the general consensus is this is kind of where it is for now, for reasons. Okay, the next keyboard is a keyboard that I should have researched more about because I have it. Um, it was designed by IBM to be used with one of their computers back in the day. It's got beam spring. I have it. It sounds like this, if you guys can hear it. Of course, I'm talking about the IBM 5251 keyboard. Show it. Do you guys wanna see my IBM? I can show it. I have one right there. It's like it's just on a shelf, chilling. show so while i bring it out i'll say beam spring has definitely been called the best clicky switch which i agree with it is the best clicky switch one of the main issues of beam spring keyboards is if you have been paying attention their prices have exponentially risen over the last couple years and in my opinion unreasonably so it's no surprise to find IBM beam spring keyboards like the 5251 for over a thousand dollars on eBay and that's just unnecessarily high which makes it very unfortunate in my opinion but regardless of that there are still some cool things about this keyboard so here's the board here's the board it's big for mine, I've converted it to work with USB. It has N key rollover, okay? Um, there is a solenoid in mine. So when I plug it in and it types, it goes bzz, 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 for every single push I do, which is really, really cool. Look, look, at, look, at, look at this height. Look at this board, this layout. Um, to think, four years ago, you could get this for like the price of shipping. Uh, about six years ago, you could get this for the price of shipping. But the last two years, 
the prices have skyrocketed. Um, it's definitely unfortunate the prices have gone so... Oh, it's, it's giant. This is like my torso size. Um, I think it's really unfortunate the prices have gone really high because a lot of collectors, a lot of people who find them kind of like say, oh, it's so, so nice, I found one that sell for $2,000 now, which definitely is unfortunate. It's also been a big point of contention between vintage computer enthusiasts and keyboard enthusiasts, among other items in between those two communities, because as keyboard enthusiasts, we buy the board and we don't care about the computer, and vintage computer enthusiasts will get old IBM terminals and they'll be like, I have no keyboard to type on unless I want to spend $2,000 because all these crazy keyboard kids are buying up our keyboards. Um, but what do you guys think? I, it's honestly the, like, the smooth, some of the smoothest switches I've ever felt too. Beamspring is, Really, really cool. Um, I think it's just cool. It just has to be cool. It's not wow, it's because like, there's so many unfortunate things like with the price, it's in a, in accessibility, unavailability for the most part. Like right now, I'm pretty sure there's, there's at least one on eBay. I saw a bid start at 400, I think it's at 800 right now. There's another one for 2000, I forgot which model of the beam spring it is. Yeah, but it's a cool board. It is solidly, a cool board. The keycaps are also amazing. Um, I am not selling mine. I don't think I'll ever sell mine. I absolutely love it. It's fully reprogrammable with a controller I threw in. The solenoid works like a charm. Da -da 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 -da. I've cleaned mine so mine like is super smooth and uh, like it's one of those things where I can bring it to a meetup and it would put a smile on anyone's face. Even if like, you don't like clicky switches, you type on that and you're like, okay, click, good clicky switches do exist. They're just kind of impossible. I'm gonna say it's, it's solidly cool in the middle of cool. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Solidly in the middle of cool, solid. At, this, at, this is, I think, the minimum of where you could put this. I think it's up to you guys if you guys think it should go that way. That's good, very cool, good, higher. A little cooler would be okay. Like over here. Up and to the right. Like right here. I think it's a pretty good place. IBM 5251. I think it could only be cooler is if I had some of the smaller, smaller versions of it. I will say there's some definitely quirks about the board. Um, so it does have like an ISO, ISO style enter with this thing here, right? You got a small shift, you got a weird carriage key, um, got the side cluster. So if you ever wondered, you know, why some boards, this is where the inspiration comes from for this kind of stuff. Um, this is my win key. So I have this as control, alt, and win. Oh my, this is actually heavy to carry with, carry with one hand. Um, this is dust too. The whole, the whole bottom is steel, which makes it pretty hefty. So there's like gigantic rubber feet. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great board. You can put like pencils here or pens here because people used to, you know, use both at the same time, a computer and writing implements. So definitely a great board that I'd highly recommend for everyone. So let's look at what is next. Our next item that we're gonna be talking about is an item that I think at this point, a lot of people have said it's ran twice in DCS. Can we please get this? in GMK. Can we please get this in GMK? It is inspired by a beverage 
that is consumed the world over with a lot of people being especially snobbish about this beverage. Um, DCS coffee. How cool is the DCS version? And when are we going to have our GMK version? DCS coffee. How cool is DCS coffee? Cool, meh, meh. <laughs> Mr. Petrov is the lone cool in a sea of meh. <laughs> I think this is, unfortunately for Mr. Petrov, this is a solid, solid meh. Um, I'd buy it in GMK. I'd consider it in DCS. <laughs> what, what, any, any other thoughts? So the people who are saying meh, why is it meh and not cool? I think some of you said it's meh while you said chocolate tear was cool. Why is DCS coffee meh for those who are saying that? Because DCS... <laughs> so I don't think DCS is that bad. I have a DCS set. I used to have two, but now I only have one. But I still like DCS. It's a good colorway. It is a good colorway. But a lot of people do not like DCS, which is fair, I guess. A lot of people aren't a fan of the thinness, but the actual feel of DCS is pretty cool. I did not come out of the closet as a DCS lover. I've said several times in the past. I do like DCS. No higher, no lower. Cool. Alpha is too much contrast with mods. It goes from hard to pair with board to almost impossible to pair with a keyboard. Hmm. Interesting perspective. So where are we putting DCS? Is it like in the middle of meh and cool? Is it leaning toward meh? Mega Force is strong on the wow train for DCS coffee. Upper side of meh, according to Sick. You know what? I might have to put an executive decision here. The executive man of interest decision. DCS, DCS isn't that bad. Coffee is a good colorway. A lower cool. L a lower cool. Make this available and easy to fight. I, 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 make it available and easy to find, and I'd and, and I'd raise it higher. But go look trying to get a DCS coffee set in twenty nineteen. That's only that's that's for me what brings it down. That's for me what brings it down. Okay, our next set is one that is pretty recent, designed by P. Wade. It is inspired by um, an Asian fruit, essentially. Um, it was one of the first sets that shipped when there was a strong set of purple sets that came out purple 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 quite a few of them came out and this was i think the first one that shipped out um it was well liked great novelties great design for um both the novelties and the packaging um the it was the packaging was designed by outrage pudding and the set itself was designed by p wade 3 i am talking about GMK Taro. GMK Taro. Where does GMK Taro fall on the cool board? Cool, wow, cool, lower, cool, cool, wow, mid, cool, cool, med, yikes, biggest wow, high side of cool. That's at least cool, it seems like, by chat. You thought it was med until you saw it on stream? 
He used to think it was not so good, but now it's high cool. Talisman bought it twice, low cool. That's it's pure saying low to high cool, it seems like. So it's definitely a cool set, which is good to hear. A lot better in person, says Megaforce. Stealthy wow. <laughs> GMK Taro. Where does GMK Taro fall? Cool. It's, it's definitely going to be cool. I think, I think it's decided, but how cool is it? How cool is it? Okay. Is it the coolest, the co yeah, is this the coolest key set that we've gone over so far? Because after this line is all keyboard stuff. See, this is, this is a split right here between things that are keyboards and everything else. Is GMK Taro the coolest key set that we've had on this board so far? I do need a bigger board. You are correct. Um, that's, I think that's the question. Is this the coolest, the coolest key set we've covered? Yes? Yeah, probably. What is the current coolest key set? The current coolest key set is JTK Yolsh and GMK Chalk. Uh, yeah, JTK Yolsh. And then the next one would be Muted and then GMK Chocolatier and then DSA Galaxy Class and then DSA Co DCS Coffee and, S and D DSA Alchemy. Better than Yolsh. Yeah, I would say it's better than Yolsh as well. Um, is it cooler than the E6 V2? Like, I think it's, in, I think it's in, in, in this line. It's going to be in this line. I don't think it crosses the WoW. I don't think it crosses the WoW. Um, if it's cooler than the E6 V2, we can move it up here. If it's cooler than the E7, it goes up. If it's cooler than the IBM, it goes up. If it's cooler than the 910, it goes up. What's that? So where on this line does it go? We've got the mirror at the top of this line of cool. Right, then we got the TGR 910. Then we got, ah, this actually is more left, so it'd be the E7 V1, then E6 V2. Under the 910 and left of cool center. I think this actually this would be a pretty good spot right here, like around right here. Let me, let me, let me, let me change, let me just push this pin in a bit more for E7 so it's more flat. There we go. People say it's not wow because they regret not buying it once they saw it. I do regret not buying it, to be honest. That is true. Um, settle for high cool, but still it's wow then. I'm gonna say here. I do, I think, I think, I think it'll be like around here. I think it's a pretty good place. Jim Kitaro, the coolest keycap set we've covered so far. We are down to our last three items for tonight. Our next one is a keycap set that was SA and Evangelion inspired, which is a very, very popular anime. The downside is on how the colors were implemented, the set was um, satirically called S.A. McDonald's. Um, this set is uh, S.A. Berserk. It was called S.A. McDonald's for quite a while um, because of the yellow on red for the legends. It's like an orange, but like, because they're thin, it could, yeah, this turned out weird. Produced by Max Keys. Where does SA Berserk fall? We got a little yikes in chat. <laughs> That's going to be a, a big yikes. Hi yikes if it was GMK. Giga yikes. Barely hanging. Okay, okay. Let's 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 see how yikes it is. Is it cooler than Alias switches? Yes. Is it cooler than Alias switches? No, it's not cooler. It is cooler. What do you guys think? No, no, no. 
Can you imagine if it was DCS? So, uh, so far, the majority says it's not cooler than Alias. I'm assuming it's going to be cooler than GMK Rainbow, DSA Combat, and Fidget Spinner Keycaps. So, it's going to be somewhere along this, this line. Cooler, cooler than that stuff. <laughs> oh, that's just, that's just yikes right here then. Rainbow is cooler. Wow. This is a pretty good spot. I think this is, this is, this is, this is, this is okay. A bit higher. Like here? Yeah. SA Berserk. Yeah, unfortunately that, that set did not turn out so well. Definitely um definitely did not turn out that well. Okay, our next item is a very, very popular tactile switch. I built with it recently and I'm a huge fan of it. Um it's a tactile switch that people would say is the closest to Holy Panda, even though it was manufactured 30 years ago. Um, it's no longer in production, and for anyone who finds boards with these switches, will usually almost instantly start desoldering and cleaning these switches because of how valuable they are, even though finding keycaps is very difficult for the switch. SKCM Brown Alps, baby. Yeah. I built a TX60 with these, and these are nice. I like these. What do you guys think of Brown Alps? How cool are Brown Alps? Got some wows, got some high cools, mid cools, garbo, low cool, Brown Alps, baby. No experience, no nothing. So, like, pretty cool. Brown helps. They're fun but impractical. I don't think they're impractical. I think they're quite practical. I've, could I built a board recently? I thought I couldn't. This is my Brown Alps board that I built. It's pretty cool. Keycaps are difficult to find for them. Feel great, sound pretty good. These are cool. These are cool. I'm gonna put them in a open spot in the cool section, right here. Right here. I think these would be the coolest switch We've covered because so far the coolest switch on the board are novel key, novel key cream switches which are pretty cool I think these are cooler I think these are cooler so I think this is a good place for them what do you guys think with this decision you guys agree I think these are the, the coolest switch we've covered so far. Coolest switch. Okay, we got one last item. This was a key set um, that was released from a vendor who has done this mistake in the past. And I'm talking about the mistake of not having enough contrast between your legends and your alphas. Um, people like to joke that when they see this set, there are no legends, and like, whoa, a GMK blank set? That's so cool. Um, this was inspired by a fashion brand. Um, this is a GMK set, GMK keyboard and co, inspired by Tiffany and co. Um, I'm sure on this print out you guys can't even see that there are legends but they there are legends like silver um 
this was the first set that when released that people were like legends oh no more so even than like sa saware which was already really bad um but then this happens then everyone was like <sighs> so ever since this set it's always been a big concern that people were like what are the contrasts about the legends and the alphas can you read them and this was the sets that really really put forward that conversation GMK keyboard and go. Rainbow yikes level next to rainbow. Meh. Yikes. Meh. Trash. Yikes. Yikes. A lot of yikes in chats. I've heard it's better in real life. I've seen it in real life. Yeah, it's not that much better in real life. It's really not that much better in real life. It flew better than that. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's uh, it's definitely a, it's, it's it's a yikes. It's a lesson to be learned. Okay, if you're if you ever inspire to design a keycap set, there are things you can learn from what, in my opinion, is the failures of GMK Keyboard and Co. So keep that in mind. Better than Berserk. So like here, this would put it better than Berserk because it's more uh, right than left, but it's still low on the scale. Just below minivan. So like right here. Above minivan or below minivan? Or to the or left more. What do you guys think about this location on the cool board? On top of the minivan. Like here? More left there. Oh, you mean like covering up the minivan, Ahab. Is that what you mean? <laughs> Did it have minivan level drama? It had drama once it shipped because people were like, that's not what I expected. Because in the renders, you could definitely see a contrast between the legends and the keycaps. That was visible on the renders. And then when it shipped after color testing from GMK and Twitch Nolly, who was a designer, um, this was the results. It actually was like, it took like six months for color matching too. So after people paid, it's like, oh yeah, we're not going to start production right away. We've got a color match. That took about six months. And then production started, which is another two and a half to three months. Um, so about, you know, nine months to a year later, after paying is when people received their GMK keyboard and codes. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So everyone's saying, everyone's saying around here. Is, is the general consensus then, right? Just around this area? I think this is the general consensus. It's somewhere around this area. Maybe. Just going to put it like right here. Just like that. Quick place to be. Well, that was the cool board for tonight. We'll Covered quite a bit of items. We had the highest rated item of tonight was GMK Taro, followed by the IBM 51, uh, 5251, followed by SKCM Brown Alps. Um, notable entries were DSA Galaxy Class and DSCS Coffee that were cool. Well said, GMK Chocolatier, join the cool train. We had a few yikes tonight. I think the most yikes in one night we've ever had. One third of items tonight were yikes, them being SA Berserk, Kinesis Advantage, GMK Keyboard & Co., and the minivan. Um, the Monarch did not age well as it remains a meh. Um, 
Jelly POM did not age well at all either, as it is a meh as well. So that is a cool board for tonight. For everyone who's watching the VOD on YouTube, um, thank you so much for watching. You guys can join every Wednesday 